So uh, you got a book that you wrote a couple years ago called Psyched Up, How the Science of Mental Preparation Can Help You Succeed. And I'm curious, you are an editor at Harvard Business Review, but this book you wrote about the psychology of getting psyched up, it's a book that focuses on sports, but also getting, you know, how getting psyched up carries over to other domains of life as well. Well, 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 well. How did you end up writing a book about the psychology of getting psyched up? Well, it's a great question. At Harvard Business Review, we spend a lot of time reading academic journal articles and talking with business school professors. It's not obvious why somebody like me would get interested in a book that draws partly from sports psychology. Part of it stems from the fact that I was a a not very good high school athlete. I played football and basketball. I spent a lot of time on the bench. But I was in that atmosphere where I watched the things that the coaches would try to do to mentally prepare us for the game to get us in that right mindset, the rituals, the music, the music, the music, the rivalry that they tried to instill in us to get us to perform at higher levels. I would occasionally run into people in all walks of professional life. A lot of the former athletes who were using these techniques themselves, trial attorneys who would do certain things before they would go into the courtroom. I remember one old friend who was an accountant of all things. He'd been a college football player. And, you know, we think of accounting as sitting at a desk crunching numbers. Actually, when you get to a high level in accounting, you spend a lot of time in the boardroom in front of directors giving important presentations. Before he went into a boardroom, he would listen to certain music. He would work out that morning because it would make him feel stronger. He would do visualizations. So he was really using athletic preparation techniques for accounting. So, 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 so. some of this stuff may sound strange, but you actually run into people using it. And I watched the pep talk that the sales manager gave in the morning. And she basically, she tries to put great meaning behind every action they take that day. So, you know, I know it's hard to pick up the phone and make that call, but every call you make gets us closer to closing another sale. And every sale we make gets us closer to meeting our office goal, to meeting the team goal, and to letting this company be successful. So she's sort of taking that small task that each person is doing moment by moment and connecting it to the larger mission of the whole organization. So those are some of the things you'll typically see in situations like that, meaning making, empathy, positive success stories. And then also maybe go back to the process, like remind people, you've got the training, here's what you gotta do. And that can maybe help get rid of some of those nerves, right? Like the Hoosiers effect, you know, it's just, it's like any other game. Yes, if you think about certain kinds of sports or certain things you do in sports and sales, especially in business. So, you know, the thing that it's hard to do in sales is to make five calls and get hung up on or get a no and get the fortitude to make that sixth and seventh call. That's a hard thing to do. In basketball, if you've missed the first seven shots of the game, but you're a good player and the team wants you to keep shooting to shoot that eighth and ninth shot knowing you've hit the last seven that's really hard to do and the right pep talk can sort of help keep you in the right frame of mind to do that Demons be gone. Be gone, demons. Be gone. Leave this studio!